Iran, the newly elected president has indicated that he does not wish to meet with President Biden or to engage on uh, the components of the JCPOA. What is the president's view on that? Well, we don't currently have diplomatic relations with Iran uh, or any plans to meet uh, with the lead at the leader level. Uh, so it's unclear that anything has actually changed on that front. Uh, I will say that the president's view and our view is that uh, the decision maker here is the supreme leader. Uh, that was the case before the election, is the case today, will be the case probably moving forward. Uh, the Iran nuclear negotiating teams just finished their six rounds of talks. Uh, they have not yet, yet announced the seventh round, but as is typical, they're back uh, consulting with capitals and uh, we're looking forward to seeing where that goes moving forward. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you, Jen. On COVID-19 origins, Jake Sullivan said this week that if China does not let investigators probing the COVID origins in, they're going to face isolation in the international community. So what is an example of something that the White House thinks China would care about being isolated from? Well, I would say that, uh, as you know uh, from covering the trip, uh, last week there was a great deal of calibration co uh, around in the global community among the world's largest democracies, the world's most important security partners, uh, about how we were going to work together to address uh, the rising uh, economic uh, power of China and concerns where we have concerns, which the lack of transparency is certainly one of them. So I think what the president and, and what Jake uh, Sullivan were referring to is uh, the global community has taken notice. We're going to work together to uh, exercise the necessary pressure on China to be a participant and to provide transparent data and access in this case. And uh, China wants to have a role in the global community and global conversations, and, and certainly they would take note of that. And so the White House's position would be that isolation from the international community is more of a but deterrent uh, than, say, sanctions and threatening sanctions or some other form of punishment. I think the point that Jake was making is that China wants to be seen as a power in the world, as a central actor in the world, and uh, they they are not looking to have the global community align against them. And then uh, on infrastructure, Bernie Sanders is pitching a reconciliation package that's up to six billion dollars that includes some of the president's other priorities. Trillion. I'm sorry, six trillion dollars. It's a lot more money that way. I'm just uh, <laughs> If, if I'm something. just here to get you the accurate info. Thank you very much. If something six trillion dollars big makes it to the president's desk, but would he sign it, or is that too big? Well, first, we're not quite there yet, uh, and I would also note that the president has put forward a way of paying for these proposals, including what he feels are necessary reforms to our corporate tax system uh, and asking the individuals, the highest income individuals, the top 1 percent, to pay more. Uh, and he's put a range of ideas out there on the table and proposals out there on the table. We're going to have discussions with Congress about what it looks like, what Democrats are comfortable with as well. There's a range of views in the Democratic Party as well, uh, but we're not quite there yet. And the last one, a dozen or so states have now ended the federal unemployment benefits, the extra unemployment benefits. A couple more states are going to do that in coming days. Does the White House think that the governors who are ending these extra enhanced unemployment benefits before they expire are doing the right thing or the wrong thing? Well, we have continued to implement or are continuing to advocate to implement uh, these unemployment benefits for the remainder of their tenure, which is just a couple of months. We, we don't actually know, because the data doesn't exist yet, what the impact of the implementation in these states is. Uh, our view is uh, that American families, there are still millions of people out of work. They still need a little bit of extra assistance. We also don't think that these benefits should be never ending, hence they're going to expire in early September. So we know governors are going to make their decisions. We continue to believe that with uh, more than 7 million people out of work that there's still additional assistance we should give to the American public. 